Hello and welcome to another limited color palette video. I actually wanted to have a crinocridon limited palette, but for some reason there aren't any crinocridon blue, so I have to make do with this blue that I'm using today. This is Cobalt Blue PB28. This is the Daniel Smith watercolor stick that I have broken up into pieces to fit into this Kuretake Gansai Tambi palette. I have Crinocridon Gold. This is PO48 and PY150. And this is Crinocridon Fuchsia, PR202. This is Crinocridon Gold, PO48 and PY150. This is a warm yellow. This swatch is going to look a bit different compared to the swatch that you're going to see later on because earlier on I forgot to record this with my camera. So I'm repainting this right now. I don't have this color in my 12 color palette, but I can understand why people love this color. This is quite a nice yellow for mixing greens. And this is Crinocridon Fuchsia PR202. Daniel Smith's Crinocridon Magenta also uses the same pigment. So this is a very intense red sort of like a crimson type color or more towards magenta let's see how it looks when it dries and lastly we have cobalt blue pb28 this is a non-staining neutral blue that granulates and now let's see what kind of orange we can get with crinocridon go and crinocridon fuchsia Let's have the paint mix on the paper. Next we have fuchsia and cobalt blue. There's too much water here. Let me pick up the excess paint. The granulation looks lovely. And lastly, we have the greens with quinacridone gold and cobalt blue too much water again the colors have dried nicely so for the orange we are not able to get a very vibrant bright orange the orange here this is a bit subdued mostly because of quinacodon fuchsia and for the purple or violet again not very vibrant the greens i like this green from Crinocran Gold and Cobalt Bloom. This is a very nice green. So the limitation of this palette would be bright orange and vibrant uh, purples. The colors are very transparent though. So these are great for use with pen and ink. And because Cobalt Blue is not a very high tinting color, uh, mixing a very dark value with these three colors is going to be very challenging. Right, and now let's paint this sketch that I have drawn in one of my earlier tutorials. I'll put a link to where you can find this sketch, um, the tutorial in the video description below. So now I'm trying to mix the colors, the three colors on the paper. This is with a little bit of Crinacron and Gold and with a little bit of red. And now let's paint some colors. This is Crinocridon Gold. I'm going to add a little bit of red to this to give it some variation. Part of this flag is red. And there is this orange bus here. There is a tree here. So let me paint the leaves with Crinocridon go first and then add some cobalt to it. I've just mixed some cool grays for the top here. Let me add a little bit more blue to it. For the church, I'm going to have this light wash. Later on, I will paint the 
browns on top of this light wash and now let's paint the dark browns Here comes the very challenging part of painting the blacks. So this is a mix with cobalt blue, queen gold and queen fuchsia with a lot of cobalt blue. So this seems dark enough. And since this is dark enough, I can use this to paint the windows. And lastly, let's add a bit more detail here. I want to add some more grays to the sky. So this is the completed sketch. The look and feel is quite somber. Now this limited color palette, it's not the high chroma palette with phthalos or azos. And also with this particular combination of colors, we have a warm yellow and a sort of like a cool red. So um, for the orange, we are not going to get bright orange. And even for the purples, we are not going to get bright purples. So the result is something like this. The colors, they get neutralized quite easily. Let me show you the palette that I was mixing on. It's actually a piece of watercolor paper. And you can see here the colors, they are not like really vibrant. If you want the vibrant colors, you have to make a conscious effort to use those colors without mixing. If you just add a little bit of the other colors, you're going to get a very neutralized palette. Mixing the exact brown that I want is very challenging with this palette. So it would be good to actually have a brown rather than having to mix the brown myself. But the colors, as you can see, they are very transparent. So I used white gel pen for some of the lines. You see the green, even the green, it's very neutralized. Let me know in the comment section below if you are using these three colors and what colors do you usually use to mix with these three? I would love to hear from you. All right, thanks for watching. I hope this is somewhat informative. See you in the next video. Bye.